Hello, in this video, I'd like to show you how to create the schematic symbol for a part like your MOSFET with multiple pins. So I'm going to go kind of quickly through this video. Um, make sure you pause just to digest everything. First of all, have ORCID Capture open with your project and then your part library. Now let's add the part. So you click on your library, right click, choose new part, then you can copy and paste the name. So I'll choose the manufacturer part number. Paste the name in there. For the part prefix, choose Q. For the PCB footprint, I'll just go with the supplier device package, control C. Now I'm replacing my parentheses and spaces with underscores. Now we have the homogeneous, we choose homogeneous, part numbering, numeric, click OK. All right, let's add some pins first of all. So go to place, pin, and for the name, I'll just go with one and number one, click OK, one. I'll place seven, actually eight pins, right click end mode. Where did I get the eight pins from? It's from this pins. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I called the source and the large drain seven and eight. Now let's change the names for these pins. So go to edit pins. And for pin number one, that's D. But in ORCAD or PSPICE or during the netlist, we can't have the same name for a pin. So they need to be different names. How do we? get over this uh, obstacle. We can call D underscore one, and I'm gonna call pin eight just D. So pin eight, the pin name will just be D. Pin two is D underscore two. Pin five, let's see here, pin five is D underscore three. D underscore four for pin six. For, let me see, for pin three is G, and then pin four is S. Pin seven is also S, no, actually. Let's call pin seven S and pin four is S1. Hit tab, click apply, then okay. Make sure you click apply. And let's move these pins around. So go with D, six, Pin six I'll put over here. Let's expand this boundary. And then D1. So D1, D2, D3, D4. Okay, S1, G, there we go. I'll drag this down a bit so it's symmetrical. Now I'll make this symbol look similar to the data sheet. Let's move this reference designator and place a polyline. So for this polyline, it's in the center, I believe. I think this is good. So place the polyline. All right, so that's a double click to end the polyline. Then we'll place another polyline. That's Y is a shortcut. So place this. That's good. Hit Y on the keyboard to place another polyline from the center here to here. Double click. Okay, so let me I'm going to move these lines up a bit. You can drag the line like this or control Z to undo that. I can move my corner of my polyline like this. There we go. That's good. And then move this corner up. Okay. Let's place a line. So that's shift L place, right click and mode. Let's see, Y for my polyline again. End mode. And then Y again 
for another polyline. End mode. Now I notice my line goes a bit higher. It goes further up, so I'll go off the grid. To do that, let's choose the snap grid option. So I'm going to drag this window to the left a bit. And we're going to undo the snap to grid. If you don't have this option, you can go to view toolbar and choose edit. And the other toolbars, you can take off PCB if you want and things like that. But make sure you have the edit toolbar active. So now that we're going to snap to grid off, see how it's off? We're actually snapping to a finer grid. So I'm going to drag this line up a little. And then drag this up. Hold down the shift key and then scroll to pan horizontally. Then I'll drag this line up. Okay, now while we're still off the larger grid, go to place polyline or Y on your keyboard. Hold down the shift key and let's place this triangle. Zoom in with control and zoom, or control and scroll actually. All right, so I messed up on that one, end mode. Let's delete this and try again. So Y, hold on the shift key, get on the corner. Go like that, like this. Still holding down the shift key, click place, right click end mode. Then I'll place a line, so shift L on the keyboard. Place it. Now let's go to the left. Click, place, click. Right click end mode. I'm actually gonna copy this, but after I make some adjustments. So click on here on this line. Let's change the line width to be thicker like this. This is very thick. Click on the line, control C, paste it, paste it. Click there, control V, paste, rotate with R. I just did it because it's thicker and I'm gonna widen this. Okay, zoom out with O. And it looks like this part is done, but almost, let's double click value. You can double click it or go here and then call it NMOS. You can say 24V, 14.1 amp, hit tab. Choose to do not display. And then we don't want the pin names to show up. So turn pin name visible, uncheck it. Oh, right, I forgot to snap back to the grid. That's very important, so snap to grid. Whenever you snap off of the grid, do what you need to do, then immediately snap to grid. Place an ellipse. Start at the top of the ellipse. Define its diameter, right-click end mode. Then select it and move it along its pink points. Select, drag the pink point. That looks good. Now let's add some text for the D, G, and S. So go to place, text, capital D, click OK, place it, right click end mode. I'm going to click here, change it to Arial, font size 10, and I'll make it bold. Now, with the text highlighted, control C, we'll control V to paste it. Then you double click, change it to S, 
enter. Double click, G, enter. Okay, that looks good. So right click the tab, hit save, close this, and then go into your project schematic page. Save, then go to place part and select the part. So I'm going to expand this here. And I see that our design cache has a part. The MOSFET example has a part as well. I think I named it the manufacturer name. So double click it and click paste or just click to place it. Right click end mode and that's your part. Feel free to make changes and edits like if we right click and zoom in. These lines are actually too thick, so I would go back into the part, uh, make them medium width instead, and then uh, refresh the design cache and place the part. Okay, so that is how you create a schematic capture symbol for something like a MOSFET.